Welcome to Conversations Live. For more than a decade, we've brought you the best in books, entertainment, celebrity interviews, and current events. When the movers and shakers of the world have something to say to you, they say it to us first. Now celebrating 17 years of broadcasting success, here's your host, Cyrus Webb. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of Conversations Live. I'm your host, Cyrus Webb. Glad you all could join us once again, both for our radio audience in the South and our online audience joining us, especially through our radio. We're glad you all could be with us as well. Well, as you guys know, we're, we've been talking about a lot about the importance of keeping yourself safe during this time, not only because of COVID, but also now as we're entering flu season. Our next guest here to talk to us not only about the work they've been able to do to help to eradicate germs, but also what it's been like for all of us to be able to see how we can be able to take steps to make sure that we are keeping our families and ourselves safe. We're excited to welcome Erwin Strohmeyer to our program. He's the owner of Sterile Sprays Infection Defense. We'll talk to Erwin not only about his business, but also what it's been like for him to do work that he's passionate about, to be able to educate individuals along the way, and how his services have been able to help others to stay safe during times like this. Erwin, really appreciate the time today. Thank you so much for being on with us. Thank you for having me on, Cyrus. It's a pleasure. Well, I know uh, when I was prepping for this segment, or when I watched a uh, a conversation you had that's on uh, YouTube from a couple years ago, and you were talking about especially uh, flu season, and you said a very interesting thing uh, during that conversation in, in the interview that you know it's kind of a year-round scenario. Of course, we find ourselves now in 2020, not only dealing with uh, people concerned about the flu, but also uh, COVID as well. We're going to talk more about you know how your services have been able to help others. I want to begin though by what I mentioned that you're the owner of. Of sterile space infection defense. Talk to us a little bit about your business, Erwin, and, and what you specialize in. Well, uh, okay, we would be considered something called a public infection control services company. And when I tell people that's what they do, they look at me like, uh, yeah, what was that again? So uh, <laughs> what we do is, is we go into facilities and we do a deep decontamination, which others might call like turbocharged cleaning on steroids. Then we terminally disinfect all the high-frequency touch surfaces where people are leaving germs for others to pick up all day long. And then we use a specialized type of antimicrobial coating that bonds to surfaces with a covalent bond. And then as new microbes land upon those surfaces, they're damaged so severely that they have a hard time surviving, thriving, and recolonizing those surfaces. And that's really the big problem. Germs being so small, you, you can't see them. I, I mean, right. you just can't. And the thing is, people think, okay, so we've been taught for over 100 years, we, we spray some cleaner on a surface, we wipe it around when it's dry, we spray it with maybe some brand of uh, disinfectant, and we're golden. And up till about 40 or so years ago, that might have actually been true until um, many of the disinfectants we use helped to create what are called superbugs or adaptive organisms. Just like the human uh, body's immune system eventually learns what, what infectious agents come into contact with it to attack and try to kill so that it doesn't harm the body, those little cells eventually learned and became immune to different types of antibiotics and other medications and, and, and even topical things like disinfectants, surface disinfectants. And that's why certain disinfectants only work for certain things and others only work for others. And, you know, it, it just, it, it, it's, it's an out of sight, out of mind kind of thing. If it looks clean, it smells clean, well, it must be clean. No, right. not at all. So that's what we do. We come into facilities like child care centers, which are known to be uh, very, very germy facilities. And basically, uh, you know, take away all the dirt and, and, and as many of the germs as we can by decontamination and by terminal disinfection, and then try our best to make sure that we coat everything, and that means every last Dolly, Dinosaur, Duplo, Matchbox car, action figure, you know, uh, all those little toys with this coating so that when children handle them or sneeze and cough on them or even stick them in their mouths and drool on them, that a lot of the the microbes that those children place on those items uh, do not have a good chance of survival. And it works so well that our clients have written us letters over the years 
saying that since we've been using your Healthy Child Zone program in our school, we've seen a significant decrease in illness issues, and some of them have put in numbers that range from a 50 to 70 percent decrease. Wow. Well, Erwin, a couple of things you mentioned there that I want to go back to, because I think this will be really interesting sure. for our audience, depending on where they're joining us from. So you're able to go into these places and to be able to provide this service. I guess an obvious question would be, how long does the treatments that you're doing last? We warranty the service treatment to last 12 months because the manufacturer, wow. especially of the coating, mm -hmm. uh, their formulation forms, like I said, a covalent bond, which is in essence a type of a molecular bond. And a molecular bond is what holds quite a lot of things together, like your phone, your computer, your house, the planet, just a few little things. So <laughs> it makes it nearly impossible to just wash it off with general cleaning uh, procedures. Uh, to get it off with some of the things you could buy in a store, you'd probably have to use like soft scrub and a, um, and a scrubby sponge of some kind. Wow. So, uh, so then you'd probably also mar the surface that you've applied the coating to. Right. So okay, so that's great for audits to know. I mean, you know, it's warranted for for the twelve months. So you know, as we're kind of dealing with, as I said, you know, you you definitely have been busy because of you know people who are thinking about you know the the typical things that we used to think about before this year, which were you know flu seasons that kind of thing. Now, of course, we're dealing with COVID. So I want to talk about that. Have you? had to make any changes in your business and the work that you're doing, seeing that we're dealing not only with the concerns about flu season, but also now with the pandemic as well? Well, uh, one of the things I was really happy to do uh, was the fact that when uh, somebody said the word pandemic all the way back in March and my phone literally just went nuclear, um, we invested in a lot more equipment. Uh, we, we built a specialized type of mobile decontamination laboratory uh, that we tow around, and everything pretty much that can go through that goes through that, which helps us decontaminate as many things as possible as quickly as possible. We're, you know, let's say a an eight room uh, an, an eight room nursery school or ch or a child care center might take you know, a full weekend to do, well, with so many calls coming in starting from the beginning of, of March, we couldn't have taken that long anymore because we were working every single day, seven days a week, from sunup to well past sundown every single day. So we couldn't have jobs where we were like, okay, we'll get there at 9 and we'll call it a day at 5. No, that, was, that just wasn't going to do. So like any hopefully smart business person, I said to myself, what do I need to do to handle the workflow so that we can accommodate all the people who now want our services? It was funny because we were getting, you know, I've been doing this since the middle of 2013. And, you know, I've, I've obviously done a lot of proposals or estimates, whatever you want to call them. And people were calling saying, hey, I know you gave me this quote like three years ago. Is it still good? <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, the answer to that was no. But right. the nice thing about it all was that in the, since, since I guess it was the beginning of March of this year, we've, we've done, you know, just an ungodly amount of work. And fortunately, and, I, and please don't anybody take this the wrong way, but fortunately, since COVID did close a lot of things down for quite a while, it gave my crew and I all the time we needed to service all the places that were calling us. And... Um, it has it has been uh, unfortunately a prosperous time for us, and and even more unfortunately a very sad time for many others. And it's from what I can see, it's going to continue that way for a while. Well, I others, think you know, right. You know, I think even here in the South where I'm living, uh, my home state of Mississippi, Irwin, we're definitely are seeing that where we're having, unfortunately. Not only the cases of COVID that are going up, but also the deaths are going up as well. So I think this information is definitely something that is needed. And it's great to have uh, someone like you to be on the program to be able to talk about what you're doing and how people can benefit. I want to say for those who are just tuning in, he's on the radio side of online. You're listening to Conversations Live. We're speaking today with Erwin Stromeyer. He is the owner of Sterile Space Infection Defense. We've been talking with him not only about the work that he does, but also why it's so important for us in the times that we're living in not only in dealing with flu season, but also, of course, 
coupled with COVID as well. So I, I guess an obvious question would be, and it may sound like a crazy question to some people, uh, you know, for flu season, let's just take that for even before COVID, Erwin. Uh, you know, people would think, mm-hmm. oh, you know, I just have to, you know, I don't have to worry so much about the things that I'm, you know, that I'm doing from day to day. Are you finding that people are more aware this year because we're not only dealing with COVID, but also with the flu season, that they are trying to think of ways that they can be safer in reaching out to people like you to make sure they're doing that? So, a, a large number of them are, but unfortunately, the way this whole pandemic has been handled, um, a lot of people have gotten like, I'm so over this already. You know, I want to yeah. go back and then I want to go live life a little bit. And the thing is, you know, we, we still don't know a lot about about COVID. Um, we don't know. I, I, it has to some degree mutated, I believe. So it does affect some people differently than others. Even as we keep learning about what it'll do to this group, it might affect that group a little differently. But the things that you really, really need to do in our ever-evolving germy world is you have to remember the hands are the germ bus. From the moment you leave your house every morning, anything you touch from the car door handle, which pretty much has mostly your own germs on it, but if you stop it, let's say, the place to get a coffee and a donut or, or a breakfast, so you, you pull the door open to that establishment, maybe you put your hands on the counter, maybe you grab something out of the, the cooler, uh, perhaps you, you sit down and have coffee with somebody, uh, you know, you're touching the surfaces, you go to the restroom, you touch the doorknob, you touch the light switch, you touch the faucet, okay? You are, co- <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, you're collecting zillions of microscopic microbes on your fingers and on the palms of your hands, and that's bad enough all by itself. But the worst part is you're touching your face on average every three to four, uh, you're touching your face two to three times, or three to four times every two minutes, okay? And the thing is that you're taking all those other microbes that you have now gotten on your fingertips, and you're rubbing your face, you're, you're, you're rubbing the corners of your mouth, you're rubbing your eye maybe, you're uh, you know, brushing the top underneath your nose, the top of your lip. The eyes, nose, and mouth are the three primary entry points for infection into the human body from what is called cross-contamination infection. And what cross-contamination infection means is you've touched this object over here that had some germs on it. Then you touch that object over there that has other germs on it. You've transferred some of your own from you to point A, some of yours and your own from point A to point B, and some of from point A and point B onto your hands and onto your face. A lot of people think, oh, you know, I was in the break room with with Bobby and Jane earlier, and Bobby was coughing a few times, that's probably how all of us got the flu or cold. No. A person usually has to be within literally three feet of you, okay, even though a cough or a sneeze can travel quite a distance in the air. But usually you only get with, you know, that kind of direct infection when you are standing literally right in front of somebody and they are sneezing or coughing in your face just as you're inhaling. Other than that, those, those, those microbes landed on the table and you touched the table and then you touched your face. So it's hypercritical these days to keep your hands washed as often as possible and or use a good grade of hand sanitizer, Okay. It's important to watch what you're touching, when you're touching, okay? It's important, especially with cold and flu and now COVID on top of everything else, to, yes, wear a mask. You want to go out and buy something that's fashionable, knock yourself out. But at the very least, wear a disposable surgical mask when you're indoors, when, even when you're outdoors around large, medium to large groups of people, if you're sharing a ride with somebody or you use public transportation, okay, and also to wear some type of eye protection because, as has been reported by the National Institutes of Health and the World Health Organization and the CDC, that things like COVID and, of course, other items like cold and flu, if they are coughed into the air or sneezed into the air, they are super micro droplets 
that can hang out in the air and not fall to the ground for quite some time. So if somebody has a coughing fit around the corner, even if you don't hear it, and you walk around the corner and you walk through that invisible cloud and you don't have your eyes protected, you could get those microbes into your eyes. And all microbes need to start making a problem for you is they need a friendly surface, moisture, and a food source. And on the insides of your mouth, nasal passages, and eyes, they get all that. Nice and warm in there. It's nice and moist and humid in there. There are plenty of other cells or, 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 or cellular particulate for the new invaders to dine on, okay? And then here's the worst part. About every 20 minutes, the average cell, whether it's infected or not, goes through a process called mitosis. That's where the cells consume, grow, and in about 20 to or so minutes, they go through this process called mitosis where one pops and becomes two, okay, and two oh, wow. become four, and four become eight. So they go through this exponential growth. So in example, for let's say, well, any place, because E. coli can be found pretty much anywhere, not just the child care center, although it is prevalent there. Um, one cell of E. coli under optimal conditions doubles in quantity about every 20 minutes. So in an eight-hour period, one single solitary cell of, like I said, E. coli or anything else, and there's never just one, okay, yeah. can become millions and millions of cells in an eight-hour work period. And that's what you call colonization. They colonize a surface and they spread out over that surface. And even if you had a few million of them in one little area, you probably still could not see them. And that's the problem. And a lot of people just, you know, they go with whatever cleaner and they spritz, spritz, and they wipe in a circle. And they haven't really removed it that well. What they've done is spread it around a larger area to colonize even a larger area. So the thing is, you have to remember that this stuff grows like wildfire. Cells build up on surfaces or microbes or however you want to refer to them, build up on surfaces faster than dust. Not only because so many people put them there, but because they go through colonization. So that's why it's important if you have gloves, surgical, disposable surgical gloves or something, yes, I know they're not fashionable, and coworkers might look at you and laugh, but you know what? You can laugh at night going home that you didn't take that many of their germs with you. It's important to really think about this because this whole COVID thing, is none of us have ever seen anything like this. The last time something like this happened was over 100 years ago, and I don't know too many people over 100 years old that could tell me about it. I doubt any of your listeners do, too. So it's important to realize that we are facing a, an exponentially compounded public health issue that really requires us to be alert and vigilant about our own health. And by doing so, we can be alert and vigilant about other people's health by curtailing how much we put out as far as microbial contamination. So true. So many great points, Erwin, and I'm so glad we had you on to be able to talk about these things. Again, everyone, Erwin Strohmeyer has been our guest. He's the owner of Sterile Space Infection Defense LLC. We've been talking with him not only about the work that he does, but also how it's been able to benefit others, especially in the time we're living in now, dealing not only with flu season, but also coupling that with COVID as well. Erwin, how can our audience be able to stay connected with you and learn more about your services and the area that you serve? Well, first of all, they can go to our website, which is www.sterilespace.com, which is S-T-E-R-I-L-E-S-P-A-C-E.com. We also have an alternate uh, company name called the Germ Police, and you could go to www.germ, G-E-R-M, police, P-O-L-I-C-E.com, Okay. And also you can reach out via email to Irwin, I-R-W-I-N, at sterilespace.com, or you can call us directly at 973-714-8288. Now, we do have the ability to provide services nationally, but I am not letting any of my team or I travel by plane anywhere at the moment. So we are, even though we have clients in, in Texas and California and, and, a, and a number of other states, 
we're based in New Jersey. So right now we are limiting our services to uh, southern New York State, Long Island, New Jersey, Delaware, uh, Connecticut, and Pennsylvania. Okay. All right. That is great information to know, and we'll, we'll be linking this for our audience joining us online through our podcast at Art Radio, linking the website, sterilespace.com, for you guys to easily click on from there. Erwin, again, thank you so much for the time. Really appreciate you sharing this valuable information and looking forward to having you back on the program again. One last thing I want to say to your people. Oh, sure. Just think about it this way. What would fewer germs in your environment mean to you? And that's you just keep that in front of your head, keep your mask on, if you have glasses or goggles you can wear, keep those on, keep gloves on, and try and stay safe. And please, please, please listen to the medical experts, okay? Nobody else. Only those in <clears throat> infectious disease that know what they're talking about. Because in these times, it's critical to listen to the experts and nobody else. Thank you very much for having me on. I look forward to coming back and talking with you again and delivering whatever useful information I can to your listeners. I appreciate that, Erwin. Thank you again, and, and I totally agree with you. Definitely the medical experts is the place to go, especially considering the times that we're in right now. Again, everyone, Erwin Strohmeyer has been our guest. Really appreciate him stopping by, and we thank you, our audience, for tuning in to another great segment of Conversations Live. Until next time, I'm your host, Cyrus Webb, saying, as always, enjoy your day, enjoy your life, enjoy your world. Thank you all for choosing Conversations Live. Let's make today amazing. Take care.